Hi there, my name's Bryony. I'm a psychologist and the head of coaching here at Relish. And today I'm talking to you about the five stages of love or how to level up your relationship. So you might already be aware of this, but researchers have found that there are different stages of love or relationship development. And just like we see children entering periods of development, we also see that in relationships. And we also notice that our relationship grows, goes through growing pains, um, hits uh, barriers, that sort of thing. So it can be really helpful to understand what these stages are and to be able to predict some of the issues that might come up, come up for us in these different stages. So the first stage is, of course, falling in love. And this is actually a really important stage. This is where the emotional bond is formed between you and your partner. So you might experience uh, feelings of euphoria. You might be thinking constantly of them. You might be getting a big dopamine hit when you get a text message from them or a phone call. Um, in this period of time, your body is producing lots of oxytocin, which is the bonding chemical, probably lots of serotonin, which is a chemical that regulates your mood and makes you feel really happy. Essentially, the idea is that you're really wanting to spend as much time as possible with your partner and um, ideally physically connecting with them as well. So again, this is important for bonding. And when you think about it with new parents, you know, they need to spend a lot of time with their child to form that emotional bond and that connection and that trust. And it's exactly the same with the new relationship. So in this period of time, you're learning about each other, you're interested in each other, and you're really kind of um, just enjoying being in each other's company. The second stage is becoming a couple. So this is kind of, you're probably still in the honeymoon phase, but you're also going through these milestones of commitment. So maybe this is going grocery shopping together. Maybe it's planning holidays or even just what you'll do on the weekend. This is kind of settling into the commitment. So it could be that you have a conversation about what your relationship will be like. Maybe you talk more about values and plans for the future. But essentially, you've established the emotional and physical bond, and now you're establishing more of the practical bond and, I guess, establishing that sort of partnership. The third stage is where things get a little bit bleak, um, and this is the disillusionment stage. And it could actually start when you're doing the forming a couple. So you might start to see some flaws in your partner. You might start to have some little disagreements or um, that idealization that you'd experienced early on in the honeymoon stage kind of goes out the window a little bit. And you just start to see them as an actual person and how they really are which is necessary. You know, this is part of getting to know somebody and seeing them as an actual human being, as opposed to the person of our dreams or someone that we're totally obsessed with. So the disillusionment stage can be the most challenging stage in a relationship, because I guess this is where we're really um, at that, that point of deciding whether we want to continue to see somebody and vice versa. They're probably having the same thought about us. So for some couples, um, this can this can be the end of the relationship. So they can both decide, look, we don't have enough in common or, you know, there's too many red flags here or I can't um, manage this deal breaker that they're, they're sort of um, showing. Whereas for other people, they'll kind of make that decision that, look, you know, I, I've seen their flaws, I've seen them for who they really are, and there's enough here to make me want to continue with the relationship. This can be a good time to get some support. So sometimes we have our own baggage around relationships, so we can maybe see behaviour that was um, triggering for us from past relationship, and we might need the support of a friend or a relationship coach or even a therapist to just talk us through and figure out, okay, is this somebody that perhaps I don't want to be with, or perhaps my being triggered from my previous relationship, and I'm fearful um, of all of those things that happened in the past happening again. So like I said, this is a really difficult stage. The fourth stage is creating lasting love. So essentially, couples who reach this stage have got through the disillusionment. So they see each other as actual people, they understand each other's flaws, they've still made the decision to stay together, and they're accepting of each other. And this kind of makes up a lot of room to then enjoy each other and to accommodate each other's kind of little quirks and kind of settle into the couple um, sort of nest. So there is a risk in this stage, which I guess is what you'd call stagnation. And you might have experienced this yourself when you kind of get a little bit too deep into the couple experience, spending lots of time on the couch, maybe not seeing your friends, maybe not looking after yourself and just kind of enjoying the bubble. So in this stage, it can be really helpful to keep a focus on your external hobbies. So remember that, um, you know, even the happiest couples have really healthy lives outside of their relationship. They've got good friendships. They've got good health. They've got um, goals in their personal life and their career. So it's great to be able to nest and enjoy yourself, but it can also be great to invest a little bit in your life outside of the relationship. The fifth stage is kind of what we call couples goals. So it's finding your calling as a couple. 
So this is for people who've kind of got through all of the stages and they're really well established in their relationship. So the dynamics have been sorted out, the power struggles have been sorted out, and they're really firm in their foundations. And for a lot of couples in this stage, they kind of then start looking outward and considering, well, what next? You know, how do we want to contribute to the world? Um, do we want to start a family? Do we want to contribute to causes or to, um, you know, the community? Um, you know, we know that we're kind of together, we're greater than the sum of our parts. Um, what can we do next? So for some people, it could be around investing in their hobbies and kind of, you know, I guess, contributing to the people around them. For others, it can be around around doing personal development or learning. But essentially in this stage, you've kind of worked through everything and then you're kind of looking outward as opposed to looking inward and, and dealing through and dealing with all those issues. So as you can imagine, not all couples get to this stage. Um, sometimes couples can fall over at any of these stages, particularly when the glow of the honeymoon period wears off and we start to see our partners for what, what they really are as people. So it can be really helpful at any of these stages to get them some support, um, whether this is a relationship coach, a relationship self-care, like Relish can really help at any of these stages. It could be talking to a good friend who you trust, who um, perhaps understands your relationship patterns. It could be talking to a therapist about some of the issues that might be kind of holding you back. Whatever it is, it's really helpful to get some external uh, sort of advice because when we're in the middle of these stages, it can be very hard to be objective, as you can imagine. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.